I'm not back in half an hour. I'll call International Rescue. Tracy, Tracy, wait! Do you not want to hear the Michael Milligan Children's Home welcome speech? Not the way you say it, your pants. Oh, hang on! Mike, someone's put that stuff in my room. Look, uh, Tracy, you've been gone for three months. We thought you left us for good this time. This is my room! Whoever's in it can pack up that scratching stuff and clear off my Sorry, chicken. I can't do that. No! I didn't know Tracy Beaker was coming back. We feel terrible about bringing her back. If I'd known I was pregnant, we'd never have... I mean, we'd given up hope of me ever. Tracy's a bit of a handful. But we'd love to keep in touch. I'm sorry, but Tracy's going to need time to adjust. It'll be her decision. It's got the round window. People pay extra for that, you know. That old room's better. I'm sorry it didn't work out with Ted and Julie. Better look next time, eh? If you want me to have better luck, Mike, you should foster me yourself. <laughs> you get paid and I'd be worth extra. Because I'm difficult and I've got behavioural problems. You'll probably get so much cash you could give up work and stay home all day eating chocolates. Oh, go on, we'd have a laugh. Going on journeys, having adventures. Just us, together. I'm sure we would, but it's not really on now, is it? Sorry, kiddo. You didn't think I was serious, did you? Ugh, I don't want people to think he had such a tragic foster dad. Don't think you can get round me with flattery, Tracy Beaker. Listen, I need you to get yourself sorted out, right? Aren't you gonna go see Tracy? She hasn't spoken to me since the day she left. Can't see why she wanna do it now. Who's Tracy? Just some kid who used to live here. Louise, she was your best friend. She's not anymore. Justine, could I have a word, please? Hello. Tracy's upstairs. Can I say hello? Why does everyone keep on going on about Tracy? Sorry. It's I coming. thought you two were mates. So did I until she left and forgot all about me. Oh. Louise! My dad's coming to take me out for tea. Come and help me choose what to wear. Take me. <laughs> Hi, Lou. Tracy. Oh, 
Tracy. This is Justine. She's in your old room. Thought you said you were leaving forever. Ted and Julie only wanted me as a slave for their new baby, so I made them bring me back. Didn't they mind? They were gutted. <laughs> there were tears <laughs> sobbing the works. They even tried to bribe me with presents. I couldn't stay with adults who begged. I'm sorry, Tracy. We can't foster you anymore. You're taking me back to the dumping ground. That's not fair. I got here first. Let's see the presents then. Haven't unpacked them yet. I'm waiting for her to move out so I can move back in again. I'm not budging. This is my room now. less than an hour. She didn't hang about. Her dad gave her that. What am I going to tell him when he turns up? Justine, calm down. I've got to have a word with Tracy. I'll have her for this. Can you fix this? I need it by this afternoon. Is it just the ants? Yeah. No problem. Yeah. My brother does the business. How did it happen? It was Tracy Beaker. Look, first one's on the ass. Thanks. No, no sign of her upstairs, Duke. She's not down here. Well, I'd better find a social worker. No, Jenny, easy. Come on, Tracy's upset enough already without having to face Elaine the pain. Let me take the minivan and have a scout about. She's probably just sitting out somewhere. worth millions. I'm so important. I have to have round-the-clock protection for minders in case I'm kidnapped. I like to get away every so often and just pretend I am a normal kid. Ah. Uh -uh. Don't even think about it, Tracy. Come on. Come on. She doesn't have to. I'm afraid she does. Don't worry, he's one of my minders. <laughs> I'm big. I'm mean. I'm a muscle machine. Oh, you had to ruin it. Thanks for the chocolate. See you around, Beaker. Back upstairs. No, I can't give that Tracy Beaker a good slap. Upstairs. Leave it, Justine. Tracy, I don't think we've said a proper hello yet, have we? Shall we do it in my office? That's one of those grown-up questions where the kid's not supposed to answer. Right. Screwdriver. Has he nearly finished yet? <gasps> what are you doing? Dad'll be here soon. Sorry, you're gonna have to wait outside. Oh. And I do understand how hard it is having to come back, but you're just going to have to try and settle in again, Tracy. And I really think it would help if you apologised to Justine. I never broke her stupid clock. Ah, so you know it's about a clock. Justine's dad gave that to her. Imagine how you'd feel if someone had broken something your mum had given you. <sighs> Ryan, you rock. What, I apologise, didn't I? Enough to make grown men tremble three streets away. Now you're going to apologise and you're going to do it so that everybody knows that you mean it. Don't 
worry, he probably just missed his train. Who's she waiting for? Her dad. I used to spend hours here waiting for my mum. But then I realised she loves the sun so much, she must have gone to Spain. But I never got a postcard. So then I knew. She was in Hollywood. She's so beautiful, my mum. I know she's been snapped up to make movies. Your mum's never an actress in Hollywood. But why else wouldn't she come and visit me? My dad is coming. He said so. Well, so did my mum. Have you been winding her up? Cheering her up, actually. He's here! Oh, I see. Dad! <laughs> Justine's gone off with her dad and you're stuck for something to do. You think you're so clever, Tracy Beaker. But you're not. And you're not nice either. Well, those foster parents wouldn't have dumped you back here. I asked to be brought back. You were just such a big fat liar. Stop it. Stop it, Clenador. Stop it. She called me a liar. You are. You're always telling lies. That's enough, Louise. Especially about your precious mother. Always saying how she's coming to get you. She hasn't been yet, has she? Go to your room now. Not like Justine. She's got a real dad, one who visits. I bet your mum never will! Hello? You can come out now. Duke has served you some tea. And Jenny says to remind you that you still haven't apologised to Justine properly yet. How am I being punished enough? Let's try to kill her. coming out in a minute. Don't see why she made a fuss. He's nothing special. Brother have a dad like that who visited and no one at all. Are you crying? Bug off, Weed. Tracy Beacon never cries. It's the dumping ground dust. Gets my hay fever. Welcome back, Tracy Beaker. It's like I've never been away. I'm waiting. Why don't we get together in the morning? Didn't think so. What happened? Tracy. Mm. Oh. 
Tracy, what were you doing? Protecting you, actually. I heard a strange noise. So I crept downstairs and listened outside your office door. There was someone in there. So I bravely charged in and caught the most evil-looking burglar you've ever seen. He's trying to look in your filing cabinet, which was locked. What would a burglar want with my boring old filing cabinet? Give me a felt. Oh, mine will do, and I'll try and figure it out. Oh, now you know that's not allowed. Why don't you tell me instead? If you're not showing, I'm not telling. Did you bring any sweets? Uh, no, sorry. You should try it, Elaine. It might help you with my confidence. Well, thanks for the tip. So what were you after in Jenny's office? Burglars. Hiding in the filing cabinet, were they? Don't try and make jokes. Social workers aren't funny. What were you looking for? It might be something I can help you with. That is a tragic attempt to bribe. You didn't have to set Elaine the pain on me. Will you call her off if I tell you what I wanted? Almost definitely. I was looking for my mum's address. I want to write to her and tell her that I'm back here and get her to come and get me. She knows you're here. Elaine wrote to her. But if I write to her, she'll know it's urgent. Sorry, Tracy, it's just not possible. How can you keep a child from their mother? Don't blame me if my behavioural problems get any worse. Mm, low turnout after last night's who are. Here you screamed the place down, Tracy. I heard a burglar. I was screaming to frighten them off. <laughs> Admit it, you were terrified. I'm braver than you, Justin. It would any old day of the week. Once before you came, the dumping ground caught fire and I was the one who raised the alarm and led everyone out to safety. And then I was the only person brave enough to go in and save poor little Maxie. He'd have been burnt to a crisp if I hadn't rescued him from that terrible, terrible fire. What on earth do you think you're doing, Tracy? Seeing if it's true what they say on TV. A real fire makes your house feel more like home. Didn't work. Justine's twice as brave as you. Wanna prove it? We could have a dare competition. And nothing better to do. What's the prize? My old bedroom. Not as brave as you thought. I'm in. And if you chicken out, she gets your room. Yeah, but what if she chickens out? You get to keep it. Want any help with the packing? because it was my idea. I dare you to... Duke, can you help me with this lock? She's my mum. You have to give me her address. It's for your own good, Tracy. Grown-ups always say that when they won't tell you the truth. I want to get out this dump and you're trying to stop me. I'm not. I'm trying really hard to place you with another family. And I know they're out there somewhere because you're a very, very special girl. If I'm so very, very special, how come no one wants me? I didn't know you did impressions, Elaine. Great goldfish. She's done it, top of the cupboard door. What's daring about that? Duke will get it and he's so soft it don't even count. Tracy dared me to flower bomb someone. She didn't say who. Shh, someone's coming. Oh, yeah. All right, don't talk to me unless you want your head bitten off. Probably need some sugar in your system. Mm, this gets a great idea. You don't want to go in that kitchen. Look at the state of me. Screwdriver. <laughs> Be that. Just 
tell me what needs doing. <laughs> Do you know anything about this? Oh, it's for sweeping up. It's gone a dustpan. Don't push your luck, miss. <laughs> Are we doing dares or what? I've got a bedroom to move into. <laughs> right, here's your next dare. One all. Everything to play for. Ready for another one, or shall we just start moving things out of my bedroom? In your dreams. You can drop the innocent act. When I come down after my shower, I want to find this place exactly as I left it. No booby traps, no flower bombs, nothing. Yes, Jenny. OK, Justine, a Beaker Dare special coming up. No TV for you tonight. And if anything else should happen to me today, I'll ban you from watching it for the rest of your lives. Everyone's innocent till proven guilty. Well, I think the evidence is pretty conclusive. Don't you? <laughs> Hello. You haven't seen a lot of cheese sauce, have you? Checked on top of the cupboard door. She'll never do it. She's got to. Justine done flour and shower. Tracy's only done cheese sauce. She's got to do tree so they're even. Shut up, you lot. I'm trying to plan my route. Ryan. sock and wring it out and serve it up to them. Are you going to go rescue Tracy? What? She really is stuck up a tree. It doesn't count. It does. I haven't finished yet. Oh, yes, you have. You snitched Peter Ingham. If he hadn't told us, you could have been stuck up there all day. I wasn't stuck. I was resting. What's that squelch noise? Socks in cheese sauce. Anything to do with you? to lead to Justine Littlewood. What's the matter, Tracy? You can't stand it because you finally met someone more daring than you. No one's more daring than me. 
I dare you to eat a worm. You're not scared of worms, are you? I'm not scared of anything. It doesn't matter how creepy, cruelly, hairy, slimy it is. I'm especially not scared of worms. Go on, take it. It's a lovely little worm. It's a lovely, lovely. Oh, what's the matter with your kid? She's always been in my ear about having a pet. <laughs> She's never going to. She finally met someone more daring than you. Now, what shall I dare you to do next? Forget it. You have me jumping off the roof or something. I'm not killing myself for you, Tracy Beaker. You are a total head case. Tracy Beaker, champion dare do off, can now reclaim her rightful bedroom. Thank you, thank you. Come on, guys, come on. Come along, slow coach. You were going to have lasagna until somebody changed my cheese sauce into a foot bath. I'd rather have this, Jude. I love the way you make it so wriggly and slithery. Mmm. <laughs> Happy now? Not really. You got your room, didn't you? You know what, Justin Edward? My new room's much better than this. And I want your scratchy old pit after all. left myself. Mmm, delicious strawberry flavour. My favourite. Oh, look, isn't that your dad? Hey, you, give that back. Oh, sorry, I look just like him, except for it was only a bald, fat little pig flying by. Mmm, strawberry, my total favourite. Give that back, Tracy Beaker. Come on, Lou, let's go. Louise? No problem. Stay, be late, and get in trouble with her. Justine, wait. Whoa, whoa, hey! Oh, Beaker, we meet again. Don't mash my place up. This is your place. It's not all paid for yet, but I call it home. Cool. Bet these aren't paid for either, are they? I wouldn't like to say. I know exactly what you mean. Plenty more where they came from. You should meet my mum. She lives on the edge too. We used to take whatever we wanted. We were the very classiest of master criminals. No one could outsmart us. Though sometimes things got a little hairy.
even when the odds were impossible. We'd always stick together. Are you all right? No, they ought to cut these flowers. It gets my hay fever. Right. Of course. Things changed when she left to become a film star. Um, Tracy, do you expect me to believe all that? Why well, should I care what you believe? And a big hello, how are things to you too? Tracy B is late again. Five minutes is hardly late. But guess whose turn it is to clean up? I know it'll cheer you up. Pizza. I'll do a Duke special. Look, in black and white. Dining room. Thursday, Tracy Beeper. See? Back off her for a while. Can't we try and all get on for once? Nice. Stu, look at the rotor. I hate nice. What, don't you live with your mum no more? Not at the moment. I'm in a sort of big house. Like a stately home? No, a care home. But there's no care and it's no home. It's really strict. That's the fence is in. Electric fences. Ten zillion volts. And the wire goes deep underground. The inmates are desperate to get out. But there's no escape. Thanks to the guard dogs. Guard dogs? Huge things. And the teeth. Do they bite? Nah. You never even touch the sides. This I've got to see. You want to see my place? You've seen mine. OK, why not? Right, Mass Patrol. This is war. Lock and load. Move out. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, General. What are you doing? That mouse is as good as dead. So, where are the dogs then? Um, must be their tea time. Wait here while I go and get security pass. Is that going to be a problem? For me? Ha! Huh. Nobody says no to Tracy Beaker. No! Look, I know I'm back late, and I know it was my turn to lay the table, but... Don't tell me. Let me guess. You were having a kick around in the park when you were spotted by a talent scout and were picked to play for the England team, but your agent had to renegotiate terms? No, it was Brazil, actually. I hate having to reschedule the cleaning rota around everybody's social lives. No visitors, not tonight. But... Tracy, do you understand the meaning of the word no? Of course I do. No means. Yes! Great, let's go. Hold on. Call me dumb, but when you said come and see my place, I thought you meant from the inside. you can do like um you no know. oh you'll think of something but no violence i bet you'd like me to build a little house then tuck it into bed at night <laughs> keep it as a pet brilliant <laughs> here we are again doing tracy's work for her where is she that girl thinks she can get away with murder. Hurry up, I want to get out of these rags. Hi, Adele, you look great. Uh, thanks. This isn't a 
allowed, is it? I'm allowed? Well, not allowed exactly. It's a flexible rule. Definitely no boys in girls' rooms. That sounds flexible. It's just a definitely that has me worried. We get punished if I get caught. What could they do to me? I'd never squid on anyone. Even Justine Littlewood. OK, but I'd hate to get a mate into trouble. Mate? Don't worry, no one will find you. Ah, oh, food. Smells good. You want some? I'll get room service. Just look at that. Perfect. You know, Jake, you're probably the best cook in the world. What are you after? Me? Nothing. Just a couple of slices in my room. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'll get the hand servants to bring them up on a silver platter. No need. I'll just help myself. No, you don't. But you could. You call one. Yes! Oh, no, no, not in here. Come on. Not by the food. Now, where'd you catch it? I oh, You haven't touched it. We got it. Right, hold this. I'm going to go and get my mallet. Mallet? Tracy. Tracy? Hold it right there. I hate cleaning. It's such a time waster. You do. Who's that? Tracy Beaker. Gotcha. I wonder if Jenny knows about your private visitor. Justin, please. We don't snitch in the dumping ground. So, if you have any plausible theories about the missing pizza, I'd love to hear them. Well, my soccer skills coach must have decided to drop by for a snack, along with my agent, to talk business. Really? Really. So, what are these? It's obvious they've been planted there, so I get the blame. Well, now perhaps you can take your fluffy toppings and eat them before your agent takes his 10%. Let me at it. OK, Zach. Let you do it. Don't worry about it. It's family. Sure. Zach's so kids won't have a mum anymore. That hasn't ever done us any harm. Go ahead, Chook. Flatten it. It's just a mouse. Sure, so go on. Make more orphans. There's no alternative. You can't keep it here. I guess not. You could just let it go. What? and have it nibbling away at my food again. You think it'd come back after messing with you? No way. It's learned its lesson. I suppose I have shown it who's boss. No doubt. You'll never set foot in this house again. Thanks, Duke. It looks terrific. OK, guys, has everyone had some pizza? Tracy, what about your friend? What friend? Her boyfriend in her bedroom, of course. <laughs> um, any ketchup? There's no one in my room, Ollie! No one, not even a couple of footballers, maybe? This is a violation of my human rights. You'd be for it. Tracy, tell me the truth. Do you have anything you'd like to say to me before we go in? Is there anybody in your bedroom? No! I mean, yes. How come no one ever believes me, huh? A brief written apology would be fine. Or you could talk to my lawyers. Well, maybe I was a bit hasty. I suppose I should give even you, Tracy, the benefit of the doubt occasionally. I suppose I did jump to... Conclusions. It's OK. Wrong number. Tracy Beaker! Oh, you mean that boy? 
please treat me after dinner? I'm starving. See? I just told you that. I need a blue crayon to colour in a river. I thought you were supposed to be working on your life book. What are you doing colouring in rivers? Using my imagination, Mike. That's what writers do. I've written about how upset my foster parents were when I made them bring me back. So I've drawn a picture of them crying a river of tears. More mm. like tears of happiness at getting shot of you. Colour in a puddle, let alone a river. Yeah, well, come on, come over here and help me tidy this lot away. I can't, I won't have enough time to finish this before the writer gets here. I suppose I better start at the top and work my way down then, had I? I don't know why you're bothering. I bet she won't even read it. Shows how much you know about writers. She can't do an article about this dump till she finds out about us lot first. I don't suppose you'd help me tidy up, would you? Sorry. Writing my life book. Oh, what with? Plum crash? <laughs> anyway, I've done the house chores today. Yeah, uh, this is extra. I promised Jenny that I'd help straighten the place out and for the visitor. OK. Sorry, I was just checking. For five tapes of my choice from your CD collection and a late pass so I can see a movie with CJ. I thought you'd dumped him. Keep up. That was so last week. Right, listen. Three tapes, but no late pass. I'm sorry. No late pass, no deal. Sorry. Anybody want to help me bake a cake for the visitor? Cheek, never interrupt a writer in full flight. What sort of cake? I thought a sponge cake, maybe. Sponge? That's not interesting enough for someone posh like a writer. Sorry? Well, what do you suggest? How about fairy cakes? Because it's fair when you eat them. When you have one cake, someone always gets a bigger slice than you. So, fairy cake it is then. Tracy, how are you going to help? Duke, I'm a writer, not a cook. Ask one of the less creative kids. That's good. And what I've written to go with it is so brilliant. The writer will want to do her whole article just about me. The minute my mum sees it, she'll come and get me straight away. They'll probably stick me on the front cover and everything. Even if my mum doesn't see it, tons of other people will. My story will be so sad and hopeful and all round utterly wonderful that it won't be long before somebody tells her about it. <laughs> Brilliant plan, Tracy. Good luck. I don't need luck. Thought any more about my late pass? Nope. Obviously don't need help then. Adele, wait! I still haven't done downstairs yet. I'll tape the Sunset Grove omnibus for you. Sunset Grove omnibus, three tapes and a late pass. Two tapes the Sunset Grove omnibus and no late pass. Maxie! You said I could sit the bar if I helped. Not till it's empty. But if it was empty, there would be nothing to lick. Tracy, walk off with, I'm busy. I need some help. I've been trying to choose a photo of my nan. If you help me, I'll help you choose one of yours. 
She hasn't got any. Oh, yes, I have, Justine Littlewood. But I don't take up valuable space for photos because I am a writer. And writers write about all the totally brilliant outings they've been on with their mums. Yeah, making it up as you go along. No, I'm not! She always used to take me out. The last time we went to the fair, we liked the big wheel the best. And she'd never say it was time to get off, ever. Sometimes it felt like we'd been going round for days. Yeah, me and my mum, we went everywhere together. Dusty. It's got my hay fever going now. Let's have a look. What is going on in here? We've been making fairy cakes. Yeah, yeah, but what with? A baseball bat? Come on, let's get you hose down. Hey? Nobody washes twice a day. Maxie, you have got so much cake mix on you. I can either wash you or bake you. Hmm? Come on. Oh! That's it. Every scrap of my life up to date. Now all I have to do is decide what to wear. What's wrong with that? Peter, it's really important what you look like when you're dealing with a writer. They're seriously glamorous people. I bet she'll have servants to do everything for her. I can't meet her wearing just any old thing. I've got to look exactly right, so she'll know I'm someone worth talking to. Oh, no! My beautiful clean bathroom! You monster! Sunset Grove Omnibus, three tapes, and a lift into town after the writer has gone. Sunset Grove Omnibus, three tapes, a lift into town after the writer has gone, and a late pass. Oh, come on, Adele. We both know you've had your late pass for this week. Well, it's a shame the one of us that needs help can't forget about it then. Oh, come on. She'll be here soon. Can I come with you to meet her? No. You're gonna roast in that. So I've got to make an effort. The writer will probably turn up looking like a film star. At least she'll remember my name. Don't touch my mum. I mean, she's not my mum, but it's not cheating, because my mum and that model are practically twins. Now shift! Okay, I'm prepared to deal. Sunset omnibus, free tapes, a lift into town after the writer's gone. Too late. I dropped the late pass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jenny's dropped the cleaning. Oh, Adele, the writer's here. Lasso the herd and get them into the sitting room, will you please? Thank you. Oh, don't try and escape back inside. Hi, I'm Cam Lawson. Hello, Jenny Edwards. Do come in. Hope this won't take long. I'm not sure I can stand the excitement. Go away! Maxie, Justine was going to sit there. Off, please. Right, why don't we show Cam your life books? Adele, I couldn't find yours. Oh, it's in my room. I'll go and get it. Oh, who's putting my stuff? This is my 
my granny. She is dead, and so is my mum. They're angels in heaven now. <coughs> Someone's been using all my makeup. Oh yeah, there's only one person missing, and when I get my hands on her, I'm gonna kill her. Hello! At first, the crowd was stunned into silence as Tracy Beaker, the glamorous, best-selling writer, arrived to be interviewed by another famous best-selling writer. Then they couldn't control themselves a moment longer and went absolutely wild. No one told us there was going to be a freak show. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Justine, Louise. Tracy, apologise to Adele. Even you can't deny using her makeup with that much evidence on your face. Tracy. Sorry. Sorry! You will be. Now, Tracy, come and meet Cam. Tracy's the girl I told you about who wants to become a writer. Tracy, a writer? Yeah. That's really gonna happen. Get that back! I'm Tracy Deeker with my incredible heart-rending story. <laughs> Tragic. She's only cut out a picture from a magazine pretending it's her mum. <laughs> We made them for you. All right, then. I stuck the sweets on first. I licked them to make them extra grippy. <laughs> Maxie? Yeah, good idea. I'll tell you what, I reckon we should save this one for Tracy. Bug off, Jenny. I hate you. You knew how much I wanted to meet that writer. Tracy, and I hate me. that Justine Littlewood. She all spoils everything. Tracy, it's me, Cam. I just wanted to tell you that I've looked through your life book and you've written some fantastic stuff. I adored a bit about your foster parents and the river of tears. Showed a lot of imagination. Are you just saying that because you feel sorry for me? You better not, because I don't care. I know. No, you don't. I'm the one stuck in here, not you. I bet you're not even a proper writer. Writers don't bite their nails or wear tatty jeans. You look like a right loser, you do. Not rich and glamorous at all. That smart voice off, really smart, with posh hair and swanky clothes and loads of makeup and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. She likes you, Tracy Beaker. to do together.
well, I am. As in? Tracy, I've got some really good news for you. You're leaving. You've been chosen to appear in a Child of the Week ad in a newspaper. The photographer's on his way now. Oh, cool, let's go and buy some new clothes before he gets uh, it. Uh, Tracy, it's not really about looks, it's more about personality. Good job they didn't choose you then. You called a house meeting to talk about vegetables. <laughs> uh, Jenny thinks you should eat more. Well, I just wondered what you thought. But we only like fries. True. Jenny wants us to explore the territory around vegetables that come in a colour. Like green. Oh. Oh. oh, that's great news. The newspaper's offered us some extra space. Now Louise can have an ad too. You know, I really object to this buy one, get one free approach, Elaine. You know, these are children, not special offers in a supermarket. Children who need foster parents, Jenny. Let's not forget that. Yes, well, working here, it's hardly likely, is it? Tracy's going to be very disappointed to find out that she is not the only one. Oh, she'll be fine. Once she sees the ad I've written. What, you've written it without even talking to her? I can't believe the only vegetables you guys can come up with are baked beans. Sorry, Duke. Could I borrow Louise? What's wrong with baked beans? They make you... Thank you, Maxie. They're not green, and they come in a tin. Duke's right. Why don't you make broccoli or cabbage? I told you she was wacko. We well, want to eat stuff like that. I don't. But I'm not going to be here, because I've just been made Child of the Week. And my ad is going to be so totally brilliant that there'll be a flood of people desperate to foster me. And I'll be able to choose the richest, handsomest, spawn most parents. There'll be so many of them, they'll bribe me to pick them with all sorts of flashy presents. I reckon they'll have to lay on counsellors for the people I turn down. But I'll be so upset when I reject them, because all of them are going to be dying to take me home. <laughs> then racing to bring you back again. Just like the last time. Uh. I'd hate to live in a strange house with, well, strangers. Lucky they picked me instead of you, then weed. So Elaine, the glorious pains, in there now telling Louise. She hasn't given it a second thought what it's going to do to Tracy. Yeah, well, we'd better be ready with the bandages. Child of the Week, Tracy. But now Louise is too. Then I'm not Child of the Week, am I? Because two childs make a children. Any thicko knows that. Stop whinging. It's only a stupid ad no one cares about. You would care if you were Child of the Week, which I'm not. I don't need to be, because I've got a dad. Tracy's got a mum? Yes, but my dad visits, unlike her invisible mum. She is not invisible! That's enough, Tracy. She started it. Don't know why they're getting all the fuss anyway. Cos we're Childs of the Week, so we're special, and you're not. Coming, Louise? OK, here's what we should play. All these kids are grinning their heads off, so we should look sad. Sort of puppy in a pet shop look. All the foster parents will want to come and rescue us. That's dead clever, Trace. Bogot! Like I'd want to come to your stinky pit. I came to rescue Louise. We're discussing important Child of the Week business, which doesn't include you. I don't know why you're bothering. Nobody will pick you once they see how pretty Louise is. It's not about looks. It's about personality. We were friends long before you got here. It's going to take more than that to split us up. Ta-da! Oh, it looks like an explosion in a bogey factory. That looks gross. This from the girl who asked for broccoli. Give them a try. You might like them. Tracy, I can't. Mmm, Duke, you're right, they're delicious. Told you. Them into sticks, you dip them in butter, and then you fry them. Really? Yeah. 
So, how are we doing in here? Fine. My courgette chips have gone down a storm. Great. Tracy, when you finish, the photographer's here. Sorry, people. Must dash. The press hate it when you keep them waiting. So, you know what we're after, don't you, Brian? Sure. I do this sort of stuff all the time. Ah, oh, Tracy, say hello to Brian. Hello, sweetheart. What's your name? I hope you pay more attention than that to my photo. I'm Tracy. Elaine just said so. Tracy? There, she did it again. Right, well, let's give it a go then, shall we? Tracy, you're trying to get fostered, not applying for a job as an undertaker. So, do you want the full dressing that you would make over, or just a smidgy lip gloss? Nothing, thanks. Are you sure? It makes your lips look better when you smile. I'm not going to smile. Lou, don't you want to get fostered? Of course I do. We've got a plan. You're going along with the Tracy Beaker plan. Have you completely lost it? What are you doing? Disposing of the evidence. Else. Hope you're not paying him for this. I've been here ages and he still can't get it right. It's hard to take a decent photo of a kid who refuses to smile. All right, you two. Now, let's try again, shall we? Right, Tracy. Watch the birdie. <laughs> Fine. We'll go with what we've got then. Tracy, you're done. Can you send Louise in, please? But when are we going to write my ad? Oh, I've already written it. What? You're a social worker, not a writer. You like it? Listen. Tracy is a lively, healthy, chatty ten year old who's been in care for a number of years. She has a few behavioural problems and needs firm, loving handling in a long term foster home. Is that the best you could say? I'm healthy. I say you're lively too. That's grown up code for difficult. And how could you put all the stuff about behavioural problems? Your aunt stinks and I hate it. Only mad people are going to want to foster me and it'll all be your fault. Tracy, wait. Lively? You want to put that in capitals? And underline it. I'm sorry, Tracy. She's your social worker. It's up to her what gets written. No! Louise, that's a pretty name, but you've got a pretty smile to go with it. Oh, no, not another one who don't know how to smile. Come on, sweetheart. You can do better than that. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, Mike. Maxie's in there. Courgettes. All right, now, Maxie. Yo, Vika, what's going on? Elaine the Pain's written totally cruddy stuff for my Child of the Week ad, so I'm redoing it. How many L's in Brilliant? Two. Wish I had a decent photo to go with it. Why don't you take your own? I would if I had a camera. Where are you going? You only just got here. Do you want a camera or not? Oh, Elaine, I want to see Tracy's ad. She's very upset about it. No, I can't think why. Anyway, it's on your desk. I'm just going to drop Brian off at the station. We'll talk when I get back. By the way, your toilet seems to be blocked. I've written a new ad. We're going with the one I've written, Tracy. You'll like it once you see the pictures written with the words. Let's it with Jenny. I'll just show you.
Next time you do courgettes, could you make them a little bit more flush friendly? They haven't. <sighs> Louise Govan, you traitor. Look at this. We had a pact to look really sad so people would want to come and rescue us. Don't know that that looks doing you any favours, Beaker. But it's your ad. Shall we? You got one? Where from? Do you want to talk or take photos? Ah, you're going for the smile then. Yeah, you're right. This is the look that's going to get me fostered. People all around the world are going to be desperate to foster me when they see my new advert. What are you doing? Do you want to be forced to eat more slimy green stuff? Thanks, guys. And a mob, Zach. We'll have them for tea. I was going to do pizza and chips, but if you'd rather have these, I'm good with that. Now, shall I fry them, roast them, stew them, or cut out the middleman and stuff them straight down the toilet? Sorry, Joke. We did try to tell you. I know. I didn't listen. We'll call it quits. But if you ever pick my vegetables again without permission, I'll boil them for a week and make you suck the mush up through a straw. Just passing through, are we, Tracy? What are you doing with that? Well, at least it's right now. Have you a place in your hearts for dear little Tracy? Brilliant and beautiful, this sweet little girl needs a loving home. Very rich parents prefer it as poor little Tracy needs lots of expensive presents to make up for her tragic past. Tracy, you've ruined it. What have you done to poor Louise? Who wants to foster Louise? She's very shy, but could be rewarding. Tracy Beaker, you're a one-off. Of course I am. I'm not just child of the week. I am child of the year. <laughs> <laughs>